you have tools for rubble stoke. I hate not having what I need when I break a sled. So this is what I take with me on a trip. And actually I keep all these things in my truck year round. So this is just a standard toolbox with like an assortment of sockets, open ends, that type of thing. Rivet case, an electrical here. And then an assortment of DeWalt tools, lights, torch, and clutching. This is what I'm packing for parts. Brand new clutch. So if I start having performance issues on one of my sleds, I can just swap this and put a brand new clutch in. And that normally solves the issue. And it's easier than trying to rebuild a clutch while you're on a trip. Spare belts, um, spare brake lever. I actually am packing a full spare brake now just because uh, you never know what part you might break, so it's handy to just have the whole thing. Scratchers, brake pads. Some of this stuff you wouldn't need to pack if you just stay on top of maintenance, but I choose to just keep this in the truck just in case uh, myself or another rider forgets to uh, do their diligence on maintenance stuff. Um, steering post bushings, ski rubbers, Spare tether cord because these sometimes break or you can uh, just lose your tether and then be without a tether. Throttle cable, um, again, not really something that I've had a lot of failures with. It's more it's like a tree branch catches a throttle cable and rips it apart. Um, so just a handy thing to have with at all times. I carry a full set of A-arms, rear wheels, drive axle and drivers. And then this tote that's just kind of full of uh, random junk. Um, you know, things for holding uh, the tunnel bag on, AR bushing, just kind of random stuff I've collected over the years. It's just like a junk pile. Sits down there, I throw parts on top of it and I have it if I need it. Uh, I just pulled up to the airport and about to run in and uh, go find a meal. Um, he messaged me earlier and said he's having some baggage issues. So hopefully his uh, sled gear isn't like stuck over uh, London or something like that. So I'm gonna run into the Missoula airport here and see if we can get that sorted out. Some way, um, your bag's in Chicago right now. Okay. Um, I'm gonna, I wanna look, I wanna look and see if it just um, got mixed up on one of the people who flights today. Or if there's some additional routing that's flying on there. like I'm looking at myself because he's wearing the same gear as me. Uh-huh.
out day two. We made it into Revelstoke late last night. And uh, doing a little wrenching this morning, just getting sludge ready. And then uh, we're gonna go hit the snow. We're staying at uh, Stoked Mountain Adventures and Emil is renting a sled from them. So uh, we have access to their shop, which is super handy for getting the wrenching done. We need to. The best way to warm up for a day of riding is to get angry while wrenching. So since we're getting a late start due to driving late last night and wrenching on sleds, I think we're going to ride a zone that's pretty close to town pass. So I don't know what we're going to hit, maybe a uh, sail or something like that. Every video. I'm smiling for you. That was such a gnarly hop over. You have to be so precise to nail a hop over on a slope that steep, and he did it perfectly. So we got a hole in his cooler. I think he sucked up a rock just over there where he trenched down to dirt. Honestly, this is just something like, it's just bad luck. It's not really ride or error. The conditions are actually pretty good today and it's just bad luck, like it happens. There's really two ways to get a sled out when this happens. One is to tow it and the other is to pack the motor full of snow and just kind of creep it out. And you have to pack the motor full of snow like, man, every probably three or four minutes. Because we're on the trail, I think we're just going to tow this thing back to the truck and probably TIG weld the cooler up tonight and uh, get back on the snow tomorrow. Start of day three, and it looks like we're gonna get some sunshine. So I'm looking forward to getting up into the Alpine and hitting some different terrain. So Emil sucked a rock up into his tunnel and put a hole in his cooler at about 1 p.m. yesterday. And we had the sled completely fixed and the cooler welded by 4 p.m. So pretty impressed with uh, the metalwork shop and how fast they um, got us back together. And the sled's good to go. So uh, we're hoping for a little bit longer day on the snow today. Day three is not off to a much better start than yesterday. Eric uh, is having some belt drive issues. Something wore through his belt and it is like half as wide as it should be. So we're gonna pull it apart and see if we can fix it on the mountain. He has a spare belt width, so if we can figure out what's causing it to wear down like that, we'll be good to go and get it fixed.
could ever hold a candle Get ready for a battle Cause you know
Wake up the freaking you It's more, it's more than I can take But I need it, yeah I need it With every move you move you need to Drone battery is too cold to fly, so I'm gonna warm it up on the exhaust and then hopefully get a couple drone shots of the sunset. I lose, I lose my mind. You get, you get me every time. Keep falling, falling fast and deep and repeat it. Yeah, repeat it. Don't you, don't you be me behind. Don't you pretend, pretend your mind. Why can't, why can't we make believe? I believe it. I'll believe it. Wait before you go. I just gotta let you know. Every time you're close, you're pushing me. Yeah, you're pushing me. Dude, where are we? <laughs> Meadow bashing. What are you doing here? Replacing a bent uh, A-arm. At least it's easy. Yeah, Polaris A-arms are super easy to replace. You working hard on your sled? Very hard. I think I'm gonna retire. <laughs> <laughs>